Hello, precious people of God. Trust you are doing well by the grace of God. We thank God for yet another day to spend time with Him, another day to commune with Him. I want us to take a short exercise, and that is, I want you to click on that like button to help spread this good news abroad. I want you to help us share this good news, and that YouTube will also recommend this channel, this video to others, and they will also be a blessing. Also, let's take a short reading from Job chapter 38, verses 12. It says, Has thou commanded the morning since thy days, and then caused the day spring to know its place? Now, this tells us of the great opportunities, of the great blessings we enjoy as children of God when we speak into our day. And so, it is what we are about to do. Open your heart, be alert, prepare your spirit as we receive inspiring messages from the man of God, Apostle Joshua Selman. Also, if you are new here, hit on that subscribe button for us and then on that notification bell. Keep sharing this message abroad, keep sharing on Facebook, keep sharing on YouTube to invite others to join us as we bless the world. You are a blessing. Thank you. Series and um, it's supposed to shift us to dimensions. And that's what God will do in the name of Jesus. Please help me honor Pastor Deli and his dear wife. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Pastor, you are still a politician. <laughs> you just became silent today. And then I, I, must, I must honor a man of God. And it's been... Ah, 20 years now, 17 years since we last saw awesome, awesome man of God. I love you, sir. I do. Thank you. Hallelujah, Pastor Gideon. Thank you. I was so blown away when I saw him. And then, Pastor, the Lord honor you. Every other man of God here, may the Lord bless you in the name of Jesus. I truly believe with all my heart that your life is about to change. This, this is for sure. Let's hold hands together and just pray in the spirit. Please pray. Mando zade balakush kalibrata. Salabrande gete barato sopra te gete balata ba. Jekete pratus gete brande gote balata pradia. Inte gato shada pratis gete prati gete bara. Shila barus gete prati gete bara. Pray. Malis kobran skede ba ashala prati gete bara da. Shikra 
of your spirit. Shalabarata seta pakoto shabrende minibalas. Oh yeah yeah, oh yeah yeah, oh yeah yeah, oh yeah yeah, yeah we. Yahweh, oh yeah yeah, oh yeah yeah, oh yeah yeah, oh yeah yeah, Yahweh, Yahweh, oh yeah yeah, 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 very simple song, Yahweh. It's a chant in the spirit. Bible says, do not be drunk with wine wherein is excess. It says, but be ye filled with the Spirit, speaking to yourselves in psalms, hymns, spiritual songs. Psalms, hymns, spiritual songs. These are songs of the Spirit. These are not songs composed by men. These are not songs to wax an album. They are spirit communications. Oh yeah, yeah, say. Oh yeah, yeah, oh yeah, yeah. Say. Oh yeah, yeah, oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Let's pray. Spirit of the living God, help us this morning. 
you are our helper. Jesus gave you to us as an advantage, the advantage. And I pray that this morning, let veils be torn. Grant us the grace to behold with accuracy. Teach us the precepts of the kingdom and help our hearts to understand. Be glorified again even this morning in the name of Jesus Christ. Please sit down if you can. Let your heart be open. Thank you. By the grace of God, foundations have been laid right from Wednesday, I believe. And so I know that by now, our spirit man is really open to receive and to be blessed. There are many factors that govern the dispensing of truth. One of it is capacity. 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 One of it, please just be, anybody is under the anointing, please just help them guide them. Capacity. Many times, a man's capacity is a force in the realm of the spirit and it sustains an ability to pull truth. We call it hunger. Are we together now? So it is important. The oil always stops when there is no more vessel. So sometimes we pray not because we are interceding for anything. It's a system in the spirit that was designed to enlarge us so that more can be poured. Praise the Lord. The Bible says when we pray in the spirit, we are being built up. So it's, it's, a, it's a system of spiritual architecture that it is possible for a man to pray himself into a larger version. You can pray yourself into a version that can host what you could not host yesterday. It was Jesus who was speaking in John 16. He said, I have many things to tell you. He says, but ye cannot bear them now. You do not sustain the ability to bear them. But then speaking, he said, how be it when he, the spirit of truth, is come? He says, he shall guide. Guide. He didn't say he shall show. He didn't say he shall give. He shall guide. He will not only give you, but he will coordinate your understanding of it. Hallelujah. I truly have a lot to share and I pray that God will grant us grace. It is my prayer, it was my prayer even coming that God will help us. This morning, because this is a revival series, um, what I'm teaching this morning it's important is for everybody but it's not exactly for a new believer because what I'm sharing please listen is pivotal to your efficiency in the kingdom I'm going to be sharing with you what the Lord put in my heart and it's very interesting because the title of this session this morning is what could be wrong We want to x-ray our spiritual lives. It's a check. It's like, it's like a patient going into the theater. And there's, there's about to be a search to find out what exactly could be wrong. The apostolic office is a very interesting office because it's not an office that is for preaching. The primary assignment of a true apostle is not preaching. The primary assignment of an apostle is spiritual governance. To make sure that within a defined territory, the truths are located for a dispensation, is released and guided and taught within the boundaries of its relevance. So the first assignment of a true apostle is the sacrifice of alignment to be able to capture the body of knowledge allocated for a dispensation. Because you see, the revelation of God is dispensational. You know that. 
Every dispensation has an assignment. It's like a spiritual curriculum of God that you must know within that dispensation. Praise the Lord. And the apostolic alongside the prophetic as the foundation of the church, they have been mandated with the responsibility to capture the dimensions of God allocated for that generation. Are we together now? And then to make sure that the administration of that truth is done within the confines of balance, within the confines of efficiency. Praise the Lord. That means that a true apostle should be able to step into a territory and discern the dimensions of God absent within that territory because their assignment is to create completion. Are we together? So their grace answers to deficiencies. The moment the nature of the office can mold you to anything, so that you can supply. So an apostle can come into a meeting and become a prophet in that meeting. That may not be his major area of call, but the flexibility of the office allows you to switch so that you can supply that missing dimension. You know a true apostle when you are confused about who he is. That example was seen in Jesus. At a point, they didn't know who he was again. Who are you? To the point that when he asked, who do men say I am? They said, thank you. We have been asking because even we ourselves, we've been walking. You are this today. You are that tomorrow. Today you are with children. Tomorrow you are at the well. Like someone who wants to, you know, you are with one woman. Then tomorrow you are with a crowd. That, who are you? Where? I mean, what is all this? Jesus became all things to all men. The apostle, the model. Are we blessed? So it's, it's very important. Truly, let me tell you, conferences like this uh, is a solemn assembly. It's a call, right? It's a call for men and women who represent nations and systems. This is not the kind of teaching you receive for your personal edification. No. These kinds of teachings are teachings that are generational in scope. God selects people to come for these kinds of meetings. So that if you find yourself in this kind of meeting, it's because you are Jacob and Israel is waiting for you. You see that? Yes. These are the kinds of meetings where he sends a word to Jacob for the sake of Israel. It, these kinds of revelations cannot be just for personal edification. The scope and the depth is too much for just a personal edification. So you are listening for a generation. You are listening for a family. You are listening for a system. I've studied the body of Christ and I've studied spiritual growth and I've studied the progress of believers from scripture, modern history, and even in today's world. And I have found out a few things that are seriously wrong. And these are some of the things that I hope to address. Remember, this is a revival series. It is, it is to call us to a greater level of stability. The Bible says the fivefold or fourfold as we know, we're called to mature the saints. To mature the saints. The only dimension of growth that happens automatically is biological. Every other growth is engaged. <clears throat> Are we together? So, Pastor, I found a number of things that are wrong with our journey, our system of mentorship, the pathway to knowing God. I'm, I'm being careful so that I don't delve into what is outside of my teaching. We have a lot to cover. I'm glad that I have four sessions. This is the first. Please don't miss anyone. Pay whatever price to just pay attention. Are we together now? In the kingdom, when it has to do with knowing God and working with God, creativity is not a requirement. 
you are not given the liberty to invent your way of knowing God. There is already a predefined path that predates your arrival. You are not given the luxury of invention and creativity. Your assignment is to find the path and walk therein. Are we together now? Because there are many ways to enter a house. But Jesus said, I am the door. No house has only a door, sir. There are windows. Are we together? And like it happened in the ministry of Jesus, you can't even tear the zinc and enter. You are only invited and welcomed when you pass through the door. So Jesus said, I am the door. That means the authorized access point. Not the only, but the authorized. So it's possible to route the knowledge of God through many mechanisms. A visitor will not jump through a window and enter your house and you say you are welcome. Find a seat. No. So it matters how we know God. It matters who teaches us what about God. It matters the things that we know. There are many things wrong. This is the explanation behind the frustration of many well-meaning believers. God will in these few minutes answer a lot of questions, including the questions you came with. Because many believers are becoming frustrated. There's something about this thing we call Christianity. By the intuition of the spirit, they know something is wrong. They don't know what is wrong. And they may not know how to correct it. But they know that this can't be God. God cannot be this dull and deficient to not put a provision. The lapse in our lives, the imbalances here and there, the frustrations that come in seeking God, the difficulty sometimes that is created around our experiences that sometimes can be justified. The mixing of our flesh and the anointing to mean all came from God. We have to do a surgery this morning to separate which one is God and which one is a product of our limitations. You have a lot to learn this morning. In the name of Jesus Christ. What could be wrong? With a Christian life that is ever learning but the rate of assimilating truth versus the rate of transformation does not match. Are we together now? What could be wrong with a member who has been faithful in church for many years and never able to come into a level of stature in the spirit? What could be wrong with a well-meaning believer who loves God with all his heart and yet cannot be able to find a basis of meeting his needs. What could be wrong with a man who seeks God for many years and turns back to fight what was once his conviction? Because Jesus told us that if he builds his church, he will build it with a formation that the gate of hell cannot prevail. Where is the line between the trainings of the spirit and the oppression of the devil. Where is the line? Where is the line between the knowledge of the will of God and the ignorance that comes from a depraved mind that is not transformed? Tell somebody what could be wrong. I'm going to talk about three things that I truly believe will change our lives. We're addressing these things to clear the hurdles that stand on our way to knowing God, to being effective in ministry, and so on and so forth. The first thing I want to discuss this morning under this subject is the concept of apostasy. Please write it down apostasy
apostasy. Please look up. Write it and then look up. Let me teach. Apostasy is a deviation. A deviation from the known patterns of God. Apostasy is a deviation from the known patterns of God. God is not only a God of progress. God is not only a God of revelation. But he is a God of methodologies. He is a God of patterns. So apostasy is said to happen to a man, a church, a territory, an individual. To the degree to which by whatever reason they deviate from the ordinances of God. They deviate from the patterns of God. And apostasy is usually ministered by shepherds. When it has to do with the subject of apostasy, members, you can rest. Let's deal with leaders. Because every house is built by some man, although God is the builder of all. So every house, every territory is a reflection of the mentorship of the spiritual leaders. Are we together? You can look at a territory and randomly pick the believers in that territory and you can draw a healthy statistic about the revelation and the communication of spiritual truth within that territory. The health of believers within a territory is a measure of the accuracy, is a measure of the balance, is a measure of the offices that are present within a territory. Hallelujah. Apostasy. There are two dimensions to apostasy. I want to hurry up because what I'm talking about is not even apostasy. I just want to start by talking. The first dimension of apostasy is a state where a man and a leader was never of God from the beginning. We're not talking of error. We're not talking of backsliding. Are we together now? So we're talking about a situation here where it is possible for a man to hold the mic on the pulpit and to teach and to share but was never of God. Never. It will be a joke to believe that everybody that has access to a mic and has access to teaching is of God. No sir. No sir. You will be joking. Please listen. When Jesus was about to send the disciples two by two, when he sent them after they went, he saw something about the new methodology of Satan. Until then, Satan would come through many ways. But when he looked up, he saw Satan translating like light. Remember now, we are dealing with light here. So Satan had tried to come as darkness and he said, this does not work. So Jesus, while they were on the mission field, he was watching the next strategy of Satan. He said, look, my system of operation now will be a translation. I will come in the similitude of an angel of light. What do we call the shepherds of a church? The angel. Right to the angel of this church. So Satan can appear as an angel of light. The fact that he can appear as an angel is not the problem, but he can appear as an angel of light. Let me tell you what that means. An angel of truth. A truth can destroy more than a lie because truth is more powerful than lies. Just because it is truth does not mean it will bless. Please listen very carefully. So it is possible that hell can release an arsenal of individuals. Are we together now? That can gain influence. I hope you know that this she goddess called Jezebel is a system. Are we together now? When you study the Bible carefully, theologically speaking. Now these things are theologically speaking. Where you have to, to see the formation of this mystery system that we later call Babylon. Because according to scripture, Babylon, like that, started the first manifestation 
of Babylon as we see. You have to go back to the beginnings, Genesis. Are we together now? Yes. The Bible talks about Cain. You know it, most of you know, how that he departed from the presence of God and there he built a tower. Are we together? Named it after his son, Enoch. Because no man can give himself glory. You invest your glory on what comes out of you. That's how you get glorified. You don't get glorified in yourself. You have to produce something outside of you. The excellency of what you have produced is how you get glory. Father, the hour has come. Glorify now thy son, that thy son may glorify you. It's called the reflection principle. Hallelujah. So we are discussing the issue of apostasy here. That it is true. That you can find people who are sincere, who are loving, who are honest, but are not of God. It is possible for you to be at the park, about to take a motor car, and you see a sincere man come with a beard and tap you and say, John, how are you? There's a problem in your family. And you just turn and say, it's true. You say, where is BC? You say, ah! Where, where do I know you from? He said, if you want some more information, follow me. Just because that man gave a word of knowledge and it was accurate. Anything accurate means the power of God is what was employed. Hmm. Every power on earth is the power of God. Including the power used by witchcraft. The Bible says, once have I spoken and twice have we heard that all power belongs to God. It is the system of routing that power are you getting what I'm saying now? That means that in the kingdom, results are not as important as how they were produced. Please sit down, sit down. We're we starting. Let's not rush this thing. Praise the Lord. You call it a revival series. Just because I prophesy or just because I pray for you being barren, and you return back with a child is not a validation that I am of God. No, sir. No, sir. No, sir. Are you getting what I'm saying now? This is not a call to be sarcastic and to just have ideas in your mind because many of the people you think are fake are not fake. Let me balance quickly what you are saying so that you don't carry a depravity of spiritual understanding or a prior bias that has been there. I'm not confirming your bias. So you don't sit down based on the limited revelation you have and say, oh, that means that pastor at the back of my house. No, no. It's very difficult to be of the devil. Don't you think Satan wants everybody? I hope you know Satan too has trouble in his life. He's not free just moving around looking for people to oppress. Satan has worries and troubles too. Number one, he knows his time is short. Don't you think that should be a concern? It is possible for one, two, three, four, five, six of you to go and donate yourself to Satan. And say, on behalf of myself and my future, I give myself to you. Satan will say, wait. He will look through you. You will be surprised. He will choose only two. You say, the rest go. I will oppress you occasionally, but to be used. Satan does not use everybody. There are requirements. We have this idea that, he, no. Do you know what it takes? The same labor in the spirit it takes to be real. Is what it takes to be fake. If I ask you to be fake, you will not be interested at a point because the labor that comes with it, we just have this idea that you just take a charm and deceive people. My God. Hallelujah. Did you see how the prophets of Baal tried to call down fire? You, you look at all the rigor. Will you like to go that, through that process? See the different skills they kept changing from morning till night. The last card was to cut themselves. As part of the strategy. That means they, they were bringing from the archives of the, the strategies that if all fails, use blood, cut yourself.
But it's true that there are people who have paid that price to be used by the devil. And they are being used by the devil. Deceiving many and being deceived. So it's possible to come into a meeting and receive an impartation. And the moment you walk out of that meeting, a strange spirit of lust comes on you. You fell under the anointing and got up. And from that day, you cannot see women and leave them again. You came to church. Oh. It's possible that you come receive an impartation and go back and your prayer life dies. Your passion for God dies. Everything dies. It's, a, it's strange because the more you are committed, the more you are dying. There are few of such people on earth, but they are there. But the second dimension of apostasy that is important for our discussion is when genuine people teach wrong doctrines. This is even more dangerous. First Timothy chapter 4. The Bible says the spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith. Please give it to us if you can have it. Now the spirit expressly saith, give us King James KJV if we have it, no problem. It says that in the latter times, some shall do what? Depart from what? The faith. It says giving heed to, wow, spirits can seduce. And then the doctrine of devils. There is a doctrine, sir, called the doctrine of devils. That when a man deviates from the faith, the second phase is that you are going to start hearing spirits as before. But it will no longer be the spirit of God. You are hearing a spirit communicate impulses that look sincere, look true. Prophesying and before you know it, it is another spirit that is taking over. And the Bible says, as a result, they will begin to teach something called the doctrine of demons. Let me tell you the truth. There are doctrines fabricated from hell. Are we together now? And released to the earth. And sincere and well-meaning people have received these doctrines. Either because of the, the theological pleasantness of those doctrines or the acceptability of those doctrines or the rewardability of those doctrines whatever is the basis those doctrines have been received and have been communicated and satan uses the same system god uses when he wants to reach a people he finds a man and ensures that man has enough influence to not be probed and because we're a generation that does not study we're a generation that just receives anything hook line and sinker that Berean dimension is not there so it is easy for an error to spread fast I can stand on these poopies now and with all of the honor you have for me and I'm grateful for that but it is possible that while standing here I can say something that is dangerous not of God it will be difficult for you to doubt you know I love you these doctrines are not brought by wicked people this doctrine does not come from a wicked heart. It comes from a heart that has been manipulated. Let me give you an example of such a doctrine in the Bible. Jesus is with the disciples. Listen carefully. And he's discussing his departure. He's in his final days before his passion would start. Are we together? And then Satan came the other time to oppress him. Jesus after his prayer and fasting and he left he returned back and satan studied all the disciples and found out that one of the most compassionate among them who had influence was peter and satan used the door of compassion to plant a doctrine in his heart and peter comes to jesus and said jesus don't say you will leave us don't talk about death don't and jesus looks at him and says no get thee behind me satan jesus why will you call that compassion? You would have looked at that and said, Oh dear Peter, I've always known you love me. You are such a nice man. You other wicked 11, I'm talking about death. You don't have the sympathy to even 
No. Peter was a victim of that manipulation. Another time, Jesus wanted to wash the feet of his disciples. Remember? And Peter said, no, no, no. You will not do this. You will not do this. And Jesus said, no, no. I have to do this. You don't even understand the significance of what I'm doing. Now, when Jesus rebukes that spirit out of Peter, what does he say? Peter, Satan desired to sift you like wheat, but I have prayed for you that your faith, they shall depart from the faith first. I have prayed for you that your faith fail not. He says, and when thou art strengthened, converted, strengthen your brethren. That means you will come for them. Every one of them will have to go through that test. It is possible for you to be studying about the anointing and you just see a site that looks Jewish and Arabic and you see one powerful Greek word that looks very tempting. Now adding that Greek word to your theology will increase your ministerial CGPA. So you begin to study and in studying it, you can delve to certain aspects. They are not exactly wrong. Then you move a little to Zodiac. You move a little to Scientology. And then you just do a little of, you know, all kinds of things. And you see the fundamentals of divination just hidden through that thing. And you read it and, and you are awakened to a new enlightenment. And you are saying, wow, this is powerful. I never knew. You begin to see the relationship of sound and matter. And this, you say, after all, all power belongs to God. Seducing spirits. You were studying sincerely to teach believers. Listen very carefully. Experiences are very risky. When you train people based on experiences, you will soon destroy them. I will show you. The riskiest way to mentor believers is through an experience. The chances of accuracy is very small. This morning, the way you are looking at me, I want to believe that the word is entering you. The doctrine of demons. A good man can teach the doctrine of demons. There are many doctrines. Let me tell you this. And very quickly, we'll go to Jeremiah 23. Jeremiah chapter 23. The whole chapter was a blasting of pastors. God was fed up with the nonsense that was happening. Ah, you'll see it there. It's a long read, you know. Should we read it? You'll be reading it by yourself. One, two, go. Woe unto the pastors that do what? destroy and scatter the sheep of my pasture. Say it who? Don't take it personal. This is Bible. Go ahead and read. Next verse. Ye have scattered my flock and driven them away and have not visited them. Behold, I will visit upon you the evil of your doings. There are people like this. Otherwise, God will not be talking. Next verse is a long reading. I don't know where we'll stop. Any part of the verse you can choose is still saying the same thing. Are we together? Let's go to verse. Oh boy. Let me, let me look for the verses and handpick them for the sake of time. Because I have a lot. Every once and again we are going to be praying in tongues. Praise the Lord. Well, let's read to verse 4. And then we will jump to verse 9. But which, which verse will, will we not read? Because everything is really important. I'm telling you, this is a, a very serious message to the pastors. Let's read to verse 4. And then I'll be giving us what verses to read. Verse Verse what now? Three, please read. One to go. Hmm. 
Mm -hmm. This is the revival now. Please go to verse 9. Let me read, let me read from verse 11. Go to verse 11, please. For both prophet and priest are what? Profane. Yea, in my house I have found their wickedness. This is God talking. Verse 13. We are reading 13 down to 16. I have seen folly in the prophets of Samaria. They prophesy in Baal and cause my people Israel to err. Is this in your Bible? Next verse. I have seen also in the prophets of Jerusalem a horrible thing. What is it? They commit adultery and walk in lies. They strengthen the hands of evildoers that none doth return from his wickedness. They are all of them unto me as Sodom and the inhabitants as Gomorrah. Verse what now? Therefore, thus said the Lord of hosts concerning the prophets, Behold, I will feed them with wormwood and will make them drink the waters of God. For from the prophets of Jerusalem is profaneness gone forth into all the land. We can even just stop here. When you read further, you will see that they prophesy and they bring visions. And those visions are not of the Lord. Let's read verse 21. We'll just read verse 21 down to 26. Then I'll just stop there. 21 to 26. One, two, three, please. I have not sent these prophets. Uh oh, uh oh, uh oh, uh oh, hold on. Who now made them prophets and who sends them? He said, I have not sent these prophets, yet they ran. I have not spoken to them, yet they, he didn't say they prophesied lies. They prophesied. But if they have stood in my counsel and had caused my people to hear my words, they should have turned them from their evil way and from the evil of their doings. Read on. Am I a God at hand, saith the Lord, and not a God afar off? Next verse. Can any hide himself in secret places that I cannot see him, saith the Lord? Do I not feel heaven and earth? Next verse. Read on. I have heard what the prophet said. That prophesy lies in my name. Saying, I have dream. I have a dream. I have dream. How long shall this be in the hearts of the prophets that prophesy lies? Yea, they are prophets of the deceit of their own hearts. Let's stop there. What they are saying is called lies, not because it is not accurate. It is called lies because it didn't come from God. So if I speak from God, huh, and I speak to you the same way, even if your situation does not match what I said, you can't say what I said is a lie because it came from God. The same way if I speak and it's not from God, even if what I say is accurate, God calls it a lie. It is not the correctness of the information that makes it truth or lies. It is the source that delivers it. Apostasy. Given to the doctrine of demons. Now, let me talk very briefly on how God deals men. Still on apostasy and show you where some of these errors come from. Praise the Lord. Now, listen to me. You see, when... Can I use you? Can I use any, any two gentlemen or anybody in the congregation? Just two, two of you, come. Thank you. Please stand here, stand here. Watch this. Now, do you know that when we start our walk with God, Pastor Shola, God bless you, sir. Let's honor him. Thank you, sir. Hallelujah. Now, watch this, please. Remember our topic, what could be wrong? We're examining the factors that inhibit our rising to our full spiritual potential. 
And one of it we are looking at is the concept of apostasy, a deviation from the patterns of God. Do you know that if these two believers start their Christian experience, now they don't know what they are going to become. It does not yet appear. So we all start the same. Are we together? Now say this man is called into the prophetic ministry. And this guy is called into say um, the academia. When both of them start with God, they are praying, they are going to church. There is a level they will get to. There will be a spiritual divergence. The nature of their office will now begin to customize their dealings. You will find out that this guy will find out that an unusual grace for prayer has come on him. Whereas they used to be prayer partners. Now they no longer can be prayer partners because this guy is tired. He has tried for two hours and he wants to go and read. He's thinking of his MSc in UK. Whereas this guy, after two hours, he wants to go and a new vision starts. And he stretches for another three hours. The nature of what they are becoming defines the level of the training. Are we together? There are things this guy would be at liberty to do and God will keep quiet. When this guy wants to do it, God will say, no, hold on. The nature of what you are becoming prohibits you. It may not be seen, but it's a prohibition. You are like a Nazarene. It's a covenant your life is subscribing to because of what you are becoming. Please listen very carefully. You have to get what I'm teaching you. So this guy, because of this experience, watch this. Chances are that in God dealing with him, because he is going to be a prophet, God is not going to teach him anything about financial prosperity. Are we together? He's not even going to teach him anything about excellence and administration. It cannot be captured in the details of his dealings. God will focus on the area that becomes what, what we call the signature of his call. There will have to be an outspoken dimension of the spirit. The nature of God's dealings is that God will reveal a dimension of himself to him. Now watch this. This is where the danger is. By the time this guy comes to the pulpit and now starts using his dealing as the template, the theology upon which he mentors members, it will be destructive. He may be a sincere person, but death will start because only those who are called according to his pattern will benefit from that sermon. Please listen. This is how error spreads in the body. It is possible that because God is calling me into a unique call, God can give me restrictions and say to be most effective, you can't have more than three children. This is my requirement. If you have more than three children, then the burden of fatherhood will not allow you to be effective. And I have gauged you and seen that three children is the best are you getting the point now? That is a personalized dealing. You cannot make a doctrine out of it. It does not pass the test to be a doctrine. That means that it cannot be a spiritual template for mentorship. I show you where we men of God have sincerely been destroying people. So we are molding people who are not caught along our angles and we are creating unwritten rules that makes them know that if you don't follow this pathway, you are wrong. It's not so. The pathway you know is not the only pathway. It's the pathway that was defined for you. What could be wrong? Why do we have sincere people who continue to feel guilty because they didn't see any vision? And based on the theology that was communicated, your spiritual growth should be measured by the visions and dreams you have. So said the man of God, the man of God who mentored you. And since that is not your experience, what God is leading you to, you begin to fight it. Because you have been forced that the template followed by your mentor is the ultimate representation of God. It's a serious error. You don't have to be evil. Any one of us can become a victim. And I'll tell you why. The bias that comes, you have to be emotionally connected to your experience to carry the grace in that experience. So every time you stand to teach, the, the blessings you have received from your experience, you want the people to have it. 
and that is sincere and satan comes and uses your compassion like he used peter he came through peter's compassion i i i, I don't know if 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 if, if we are so Jesus told Peter, Satan has desired to sift you and he used the window of your sincere compassion. Chances are that if I had the privilege to be raised by a father who was an entrepreneur and a very great man, I had the opportunity to have business savvy at a very young age. Are we together now? And by age 17, 18, I'm a multi-millionaire. By the time I hear someone who went through all kinds of things, I look at the person and I say, oh dear, I really pity you. Because life is only principles. When this guy is praying and all of this, I say, look, there is no devil anywhere. The only devil is the devil in your brain. It's not my fault. Because the nature of the leverage I received, listen, someone had paid the price for me. And so it made it easy. So in my Christian experience, the value of prayer and consecration was not captured there so when i'm mentoring people i would trivialize the issue of prayer i would trivialize fasting i would say well what is fasting for what is prayer for and i'm the only one who is succeeding because that template was carved out for my uniqueness what then is the excellency of the holy ghost given to individuals he will guide you not as a group there is a path, a mark for your destiny. And it is the assignment of the Spirit of God to guide you. An exact body of truth allocated for your destiny. Listen down. Blessed are you, O Lord our God. Eternity is holy King. Blessed are you, O Lord, whose words brings up the evening. But I can't wonder if I am. By wisdom, O God, heaven's gates open up. With understanding, you order the seasons, creating day and night, turning darkness into light, arranging the stars to your pleasing. Listen, if you pay attention to what I'm telling you, it will not make you hate anybody, but you will be an agent of balance. You will know where to run to your house and say, I know where the problem is now. When we got born again, not that the pastor was bad, but the system of mentorship is why darkness prevails over this family. The most powerful prayer warrior prays for 15 minutes because he's following the path of the business mogul who has everything working in place. And remember, your assignment is to be an apostle or to be a prophet. And there is a requisite level of spiritual investment you must make per day to attain unto that. Per day is added. If it does not match up after a threshold period, you will repeat it again. So when everybody is praying one, one hour, you can finish and you want to turn your plate upside down. God said, I hope you know you are going seven days. He said, Lord, why me? And he says, have you forgotten the prophecy your mother told you? What did the man tell her before you came? The person who is your prayer partner, the problem he's praying for, you are the answer. So you can't pray the same hour just because you started together. You are part of the people. He is part of the people you were sent to. There are people because of their assignments. You can't enter a relationship twice. God will prohibit you. 
any guy that there's nothing like trial and error to let's see how things move. the nature of the child that must come out from your womb there, there is a preservation are we together yes and like abimelech when you look at a particular lady say my god i'm considering you will have a dream that night god will say don't near this girl you can choose anybody around but there is prophecy there's too much on this destiny and the womb that that child will bring for you to be careless and in the name of love destroy that person now when that person is teaching about relationship this is going to be the person's template if you ever have more than two or three people you are not in the will of god that's not true it was a template defined because of the nature of what you are carrying imagine that mary was going to teach about fertility do you know what the theology of mary will be men are not very needed ghosts and spirits can get people pregnant and she has the results how many people in the bible did the holy ghost get pregnant when you build doctrines out of personalized dealings listen very carefully i there's no time i would have shown you a man in the bible sir when jesus was speaking to the seven churches in asia minor that represented the catholic church the universal church dearly beloved i hope you were blessed by this message i want you to keep doing something for this man of god our man of god apostle joshua salmon and that is i want you to keep on praying for him that the cause of the gospel may have free flow in him that he may be granted boldness to continue with his commission of jesus christ and that all provisions be given unto him as he continues in this journey of christianity and then don't forget to like this video don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you are new here don't also forget to leave a comment in the comment section and then keep sharing keep sharing abroad and let's all keep sharing jesus i'll see you again bye